Morning, folks. Welcome along to the vlog. We are in the brewery. Ah, it's, it's normal, anyway. Yeah, here we are. So, I've uh, got a few jobs to do today. Flip the camera, and I'll tell you all about it. Bingo. So, racking. Look at that lovely, lovely piece of equipment. So, that's going to save me tons of space down here, hopefully. So, what I'm wanting to do today is start to put maybe all the boxes for packaging and bottling holders and that kind of jazz up on that shelf but I need to make another shelf for the top and uh, I don't have any more scaffolding boards this is some of the stuff I'd like to store up there to free the top of here so yeah I don't have any scaffolding boards there's also another layer I need to put up there as well and I don't particularly want to spend a lot on well I've got some sheets of three quarter inch ply here, 18 mil. I could use them. I could cut two of those down. It's only two, but we've also got all of this um, chipboard. I know it's chipboard, so it doesn't hold a lot of weight, but some of it's MDF as well. It isn't going to be holding a lot of weight really, because we're just going to put small things on the top shelves. You wouldn't put heavy, heavy, heavy stuff up there, would you? So I think we're going to see if we can cut some of this stuff down. And then I suppose it'll save us having to run it all up to the tip over the next week or two. Well, when the tip's finally open. Uh, there's another piece of MDF here as well. I wonder if that's wide enough. It doesn't look it. I need 900 wide, which is a bit of a bummer. Because that means I can only get one per sheet of ply, you see. Because they're 1,200 wide, so I can only get one length so to speak <clears throat> anyway so let's cut some of this stuff up and make a shelf out of it there's some more boxes there i might do the boxes over here i don't know and uh some more rubbish we need to get rid of cans still waiting to be filled and there's the lovely can filling machine which i might clean up today and get ready uh so yeah quite a few jobs to start with this morning I also want to make an end frame for this. Let me just come back a touch. An end frame for this upright here so I can hang all my hoses on there, get them off the floor because at the moment they kind of just end up draped across the outlets, you know, on the tanks. So it would be nice to actually have somewhere permanent. And now we've got this in position properly, there's loads of room for the, uh, I thought it was a little bit on the tight side, but there's actually loads of room for the pilot kit to fit in there. So I'm thinking I might also be able to shifty the can filler in there as well, push that over. And we've had communication today with Innovus Engineering. Thank you, brilliant, nice work. Apparently it's ready to ship. So uh, their MD's been on holiday for two weeks or away off. I don't know if he's actually been on holiday. But he's back in the office today, which is why we got the Communicado. And finally, they're going to send it out. If not today, then it'll be first thing Monday. So next week we should have a SEMA on site. So the whole shebang, the SEMA was expensive at uh, 6,000 quid plus that big big investment for the brewery i know but we managed to build this piece of equipment for a thousand pounds the cans cost about 500 quid and then we've got the labeler for another 350 so all in we're talking you know some other bits as well like all the boxes all the the uh, the lids, you know, for the six packs, everything like that. I'd say we have spent the best part of nine thousand quid on this canning project. So it wants to bring that kind of revenue back in when we start canning. It's a really big investment. In fact, it's the biggest investment that we've made in the brewery because I've built the actual brewery itself for less than that. To give you an idea. 
of how much we invested. Well, this side anyway. These tanks here we bought, didn't we? But these tanks, yeah, well, we fabricated these from sheets of stainless steel, which came to about 2,000 quid. And then it was just my time. I suppose if you factor my time in, then it was more than 10,000 quid. But, uh, yeah, this stuff, manufactured all the pipe work, as you guys know, bought the uh, plate chiller. That was about 900 as far as that. Was it five or nine? Pretty good value, to be honest. And then some of the other bits we had to buy, of course, were the elements at about £300 each, I think they were. That kind of stuff. But mainly the most expensive components on here were all the RJT fittings and uh, track lamps, elements, you know, that kind of stuff. The steel was relatively cheap. Anyway, I'm waffling and I've digressed. The good news is we actually have the can seam on its way. So we're going to get this little beauty of a instrument up and running, or at least get it ready. Oh, and one thing I wanted to talk about as well, while I've got your attention, folks, is I'm slightly altering the dry hop process for the beers so we can have clearer beer going into cans because I don't want to be putting sludge in cans. Some of these cans that I've had recently, they are taking the mickey, I think, with the can-conditioned uh, caveat. So they're just filling it up with like it's soup. And now, whilst I understand that a hazy beer is nice, you shouldn't have a sludgy beer. That's too much. It's a bit cheeky. So what I'm intending on doing is, as I ferment, we're going to put a couple of extra days on the fermentation schedule, which is going to allow me to drop the cone on the tanks. So what I might start doing is using these five tanks over here as my primary fermentation tanks and using these three tanks on this side as conditioning tanks because of the angle of the cone on the bottom so I'll be able to drop the cone a lot better there and then the idea is we put the beer in and ferment it and on day four or day five quick blast out of the valve at the bottom to drop the tube that's in the bottom of the cone and then we'll let the fermentation continue each day just drop in just about a pint or two just to knock anything that's settled out in the bottom of the cone out of the tank and then uh, we're going to go ahead and dry hop so we'll dry hop on let's say day five and we'll let that break down for a day and then what i'm wanting to do is hook up a pump to the racking arm there through the pump and then back in through the main tank outlet so we're going to recirculate the hops and then say day seven we put the second charge of dry hops in give it a day to break down and then same thing recirculate through the racking arm so i'm planning on using a good old mag pump as a lot of you may be familiar with the uh, brew pump 3000 as it's marketed by matt over at keg kingdom available on amazon ebay aliexpress all that kind of jazz but you have to wait for it to be shipped from china that way i believe matt's got it in stock and he can send you it immediately and it's a uh, they're really good pumps. I'd like to get hold of the next one up. There's a there's an MP25 or something like that. Uh, it's bigger, bigger capacity. It would be nice to see some of them land in the UK. I might even see if I can source one myself, but uh, just give us a bit more power, you know, to move things around with. But anyway, my plan is we've got these 15mm um, push fit fittings. We're going to use this pump as well for pumping the beer into the can filler but my plan is to also use it as uh, a sanitary pump because I can clean it down nice and easy break it down and then use that to recirculate the hops in here 
So that's the plan as it stands. And hopefully doing that will extract more hop flavor. Then we can cold crash. Hop flavor and aroma, of course. Then we can cold crash, get all the beer right down to the bottom of the tank, fine it, and hopefully then there won't be as much yeast and stuff in suspension because we've gone through the process of um, purging the tanks, if you like. There's another word for it, drop in the cone. Drop the cone. So that's what the plan is. So I've been doing it all week. Every day I've come in in the morning, I've come down with the uh, PAA and I've sprayed the outlets like this. Good spray of sanitizer in there and then blasted that out into a bucket, then hosed it down afterwards. So I'm gonna to continue to do that today and then we're gonna drop the dry hops into tank one at very least. We'll see what uh, what the specific gravity is of the other two tanks because I've recently just had a problem with the repeaters so I can't get the tilt measurements out of there unless I actually go up to the top and put my phone near the top. Anyway, that's by the by. We've got loads of jobs to do. I've waffled on for 11 minutes plus. I think it's time that I did some work. Oh, we've got some bits up there, folks. Um, but time's ticking on now. Let's have a look around the corner. Oh, I guess that clock must have stopped. What's this one say? Uh, it's 10 past seven. 10 past seven and it's Friday. I shouldn't really be here. So I've taken some readings of these beers. The vacant's got a couple of points to go yet, whereas the proof of concept's finished. So what I'm gonna do is just leave the vacant over the weekend and then I can treat them all the same and I can dry up them all together. I can cold crash them all together. In fact, I could start bringing the temperature of this one down already. Just by a few degrees, so it's got a little bit of a leap on the other tanks, if you know what I mean. That's good enough. Um, so yeah, I've done a little bit of testing and fiddling about with the canning machine. And uh, I found out that well, these cheapo valves that I've got, they're no good. They're not really sealing. So um, when I turn the power off, they drip and leak a little bit. And also the line's not big enough to let enough liquid through. So we've got this 15 mil line coming in and it breaks down to the uh, 3 eighths pipe through the solenoids. So I've managed to find another company, Solenoid Valves UK or something like that, that do these, but with the 15 mil push fit. So we should be able to jump onto this size. You can see the difference in the size of the Hoylio. And they've got an 11 millimeter internal um, orifice is how it's described. So hopefully, That'll allow better flow uh, through the solenoid valves and then what we'll do is we'll run 15 mil out of the top of them all the way around maybe to here and we'll just go down to 3 8 here or maybe just on the other side I don't know we'll play that one by ear and then also I don't think this pump is powerful enough to push enough beer through here in a timely fashion and I don't want to be standing around too long waiting for cans to fill so what I'm going to do instead is I think we will just pre-fill into keg these are some kegs from the pub this is one that uh, the scrumpy wasp the local cider man uses but these are 50s so I thought I'd uh, just borrow them, you know, just borrow them and give them a whirl. We've got our 30 litres here, so I might just use them anyway. But instead of um, using a pump to transfer the beer and push it through the lines, I think I'd be better off because I don't want the pump to... You know how the pump's going to just kind of generate foam, isn't it? It's going to knock all the foam out of the out of the beer so I don't really want to do that 
So instead, what we'll do is pressurise it in a keg. If I could get my hands on some 100 litre kegs, that would be even better, because then it's less changing. But, at the same time, I can put the priming solution into the keg, fill the keg, mix the priming solution, because that was something that I was always worried about having to do anyway. And then I can put the lid on the keg, pressurise it up to 20 psi or whatever I need it at, and then we can fire it through the pipes, and it ain't going to be hitting an impeller, therefore it ain't going to be knocking out the CO2. So I think that, folks, is the way we're going to approach this. Um, but let's turn her on. May as well give her a little, little looky poo. So let's push these cans all the way to the edge. You can see I've had a couple of accidents here, but I managed to get everything lined up and perfect now. So a little treat before I say goodbye for the weekend, folks. Here we go. Absolutely flawless. Look at that. You know, shall we do it once again for the second time? Let's push them back and I'll show you from down below. They do not rattle, roll or wobble. Oh, it's a thing of beauty. Anyway, cheers for watching guys. I'll see you on the next one.